Hello all listeners and welcome to the first ever press conference podcast. My name is Dan Simonite and I'm joined today by Leeds United social media manager Craig Wilson who's built somewhat of a reputation for being a bit of a savage from the club account. We speak about that Twitter spat with Niall Horan and Derby County, his meeting with the EFL, what it's like to actually work at Leeds United and a few viral tweets from back in the day which you might have seen from a certain students union. So please join us for the next 45 minutes, it's definitely not one to be missed. Craig Wilson, who's the social media manager at Leeds United. How are you doing, Craig? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Very well, mate. How have you been occupying your time during uh, this period? I'm um, just trying to keep the club accounts busy uh, with content. It's quite a unique time in that you have your match days taken away from you. Uh, so it's just trying to kind of come up with new ideas, which is nice on a creative level. Um, and then just trying to potter around the house, trying to do gut some of the gardening and trying to do up the house and that. Firstly, I was just wanted to start on the early beginnings of your career, really, within the media. Um, so sort of where did this all start? You know, did you go through the university system? Yeah, so um, a lot of people come through kind of the press side of things, um, but I actually came through a marketing degree. So I went to Northumbria University and then basically from there um, did a few like odd jobs at like Blockbuster, the police, um, worked for an MMA company randomly. Um, Yeah, it's not as exciting as it sounds. Um, It was literally like a shop in the middle of uh, Newcastle. And then I I worked at Newcastle University doing digital marketing for them, uh, working in the students' union, uh, which gave us a bit more of a kind of creative um, outlet in terms of what we could put out, what we couldn't put out. So yeah, did the social media there, the website, um, and all that really. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, I also went to Northumbria, so I guess we've sort of got that in common. You know, it's, I had an absolute blast there on um, in Newcastle. Are you from Newcastle? Yeah, yeah, born and bred in Newcastle. Um, nice. Been in Leeds for the last, what, five years? Oh, nice. I, see, I can see a bit of a twang in the accent, but I'm not really too sure. So obviously, at New, uh, sorry, Northumbria University, what sort of degree did you do then at the start? So, um, yeah, basically business with marketing. So it involved a bit of like uh, marketing law, um, your kind of basic marketing principles, um, learn all about the seven P's and um, all that. And um, yeah, so literally it was all just about basically creating marketing strategies for companies and well, Throughout the entire time, it was kind of like, I was always very much interested in the digital side of uh, the stuff yeah. we were learning. Um, the others, I'm not the most kind of, um, it's more like vocational stuff that I'm more interested in, the stuff, hands-on stuff, rather yeah. than kind of head in a book type things. Yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was just a case of, I just loved the idea of being creative, uh, creating kind of campaigns and all that um, and then just kind of putting them into practice. After you finish your, your degree you you know you go to you know what's known as sort of the dark side really if you go to North Umbria you go to um, Newcastle um, SU is it um, do you have a few sort of like viral stuff there going on or is that where it first started? Yeah, not many people actually know this, but when I was at Newcastle University, uh, we used to do, I started doing like April Fool um, kind of articles and things for social media. And uh, one of them was um, One Direction Zayn Malik. So the One Direction thing, it's, it's always been there for some reason. I don't know why. It just keeps cropping up um, throughout my time. But um, yeah, basically he had just left the band or something and nobody <laughs> knew what he was going to do next. So we um, basically put out on April the 1st saying, Zayn Malik's uh, take, coming to Newcastle University. He's uh, going to do the countryside management course, literally the, the weirdest kind of course we could find. And um, then literally we just put it out there, not expecting much and literally it ended up going worldwide. The newspapers started reporting on it. Um, we started faking like Instagram posts of him in Newcastle. Um, and it just kind of took off. The next thing we knew we had Japanese students and all that kind of 
um, hopping on and going, oh my God, I'm going to join this uh, course. <laughs> and it just basically blew up. And then uh, we just kept doing things from then. Um, so like, and then the following year we did, renamed Newcastle University to the Sports Director University. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Basically photoshopped a crane, changing the logo and stuff. Um, and just little things like that. And as I say, it was just kind of a, it's stuff that the main university wouldn't ordinarily put out, but we kind of got away with that type of thing. Yeah, that, that, to us, that seems to be um, sort of your style as well on, on the Leeds account as well, it seems. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've, you've left, um, well, so you haven't left, you, you're at Newcastle SU at the moment and um, you joined Leeds. So how does um, that Leeds United job come up? So um, I'd been at Newcastle University for four and a half years and um, I wasn't actively looking to leave, but you just kind of keep an eye out for things that you think might be cool. Um, and I just saw the Leeds job come up um, as a marketing executive um, there. And um, so I applied for it, uh, didn't think anything of it, then got in, um, asked for an interview. So yeah, why not? We'll go check it, check it out. If anything, it, um, my dad's a massive Leeds fan, so um, I thought it's a day out at Ellen Road. See what's um, behind the scenes and stuff. Um, so yeah, just went to the interview, um, and literally within a couple of days, they got back in touch. Said, "Do you want to be our uh, marketing guy?" And then um, yeah, literally. It was a bit hard because my wife actually got offered a job on the same day that I did. Oh. Um, yeah, so that was a bit of an interesting one. But um, it literally, the conversation literally was like, it's Leeds United. I've yeah. Got to do it. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Like, um, so, yeah, basically moved down to Leeds, um, did marketing, like, in terms of. It was uh, just myself doing the marketing um, and yeah, doing all the graphic design, all the marketing, putting 200 posters up around the stadium on a match day. Did that for two and a half years. Um, and then our head of comms, uh, James Mooney, came in. I think he could, he realized that I much enjoyed kind of doing the digital side of things at the club uh, more than I did kind of. Um, some of the other stuff. So he just said, do you fancy trying out being uh, social media, um, running all that? I said, yeah, sure. Um, and literally not looked back, been doing it for two and a half years, um, really enjoyed it. Yeah, so was football media always something you sort of wanted to get into or was it just the case you'd seen the job and you, know, you thought it was quite interesting? I think for me, like... Um, it's, I'm not really kind of money oriented. So, um, literally when I was looking for kind of stuff coming up, it wasn't so much, um, will I, how much will I get paid to do that? It was more, what will be interesting? Like, what will I find kind of interesting on a day to day basis? Um, so yeah, literally saw the Leeds job come up and thought, yeah, I like football. I play football manager. Um, I've always kind of followed Leeds and that was the close connection between Leeds and Newcastle um, as I say my dad's a massive fan it was just like yeah it's interesting and, yeah. and then um, in terms of the actual media side of things just kind of fell into it if I'm honest um, I love doing marketing but I prefer the, as I say the, um, the creative side of things in terms of just sitting down, coming up with an idea and just putting it out there. And uh, the social media sites kind of allows me to do that. Yeah, I know you said interesting. It's, you know, it's a very interesting job and an interesting club as well, I guess. I guess you've seen quite a, quite a lot um, during your tenure, haven't you? Yeah, so um, I came in towards the end of the Chilino kind of uh, era. And to be honest, I can't speak... Um, any highly than because when I came in, obviously the, the previous years had been difficult for the club and that, all that, but I came in when it really started to change for the better. So um, the last 
like a couple of years um, when I first started. Literally, it was everything was kind of building back up, building egg uh, because there'd been like a lot of job cuts in the past. Whereas we start adding uh, people, um, and then it's just kind of grew and grew and grew. Um, Andrea, the owner, uh, came in and he's kind of grew it even more. Um, so I've seen nothing but kind of positive um, things whilst I've been at the club. It's been an amazing experience. Yeah, I can imagine. Is it quite a nice place to work then at the moment in terms of, you know, the club's doing well. They're looking like they're um, well, hopefully going to be in the Premier League. But, um, is it nice in that environment? Yeah, it's really nice. Um, obviously, it's same as every football club. If you win... Everyone's happy. If um, you lose, then it's seven days where everyone's like in a bad mood or kind of frustrated and they just want the next game to come along. Um, but yeah, literally, we've been lucky in the last two seasons where we're winning more than we're losing. So it's a fantastic place to work. Everyone's um, spot on, like the entire staff. Uh, the vast majority of them are either lead supporters or uh, the might we've got a couple of Huddersfield supporters who um, we'll let we'll let it go but because <laughs> the, they all still get behind the club and um, yes just literally everyone's bouncing off each other um, and everyone's kind of in a good place really yeah that's good so how's sort of Bielsa to work with that you know he doesn't he doesn't speak English does he do you have much sort of contact with him um, I personally don't. Um, we do like the press conferences and all that, which literally, it's, it's one of those where uh, when eventually he does leave, and hopefully it's not for a while yet, but it'll be one of those things where you look back and you think, I literally sat in those press conferences because some of the things, uh, a lot of them are almost like lectures and you're just sat there learning new things and his philosophy on life uh, not just football is absolutely amazing so um, we get because he doesn't do like one-on-one -on -one interviews um, we tend to have very long press conferences which can last up to an hour an hour and a half because he'll sit there and he'll answer every single question and it's great because um, it just gives us more content as well in terms of we do the press conferences live on Facebook and Twitter. And then um, we also uh, put out quotes during the press conferences and do write-ups and all that. So um, although we don't get like one-on-one -on -one kind of stuff with them, uh, there's more than enough kind of content there to last both before and after a game. Yeah, so is that one-on-one, -on -one, is that sort of at his own request then? Because, you know, I know at York um, we – only really do one-on-one -on -one with like the radio really um mm -hmm. but it's more the manager's happy really to speak to anyone is that sort of the case with yourselves yeah so um it's the way it works is like um we've got quite a big press pool uh, so we've got like bbc leeds uh, yp um and leeds live and all that and then we get a few nationals down as well um but in because Marcelo will only do the press conferences, we tend to then uh, get the players to do more interviews and all that. Um, that's more kind of like James Mooney, uh, our head of comms, who will deal with that, and Jordan Owens, our press officer. Uh, they're great at kind of uh, working with our press. And um, it's nice because, again, people don't kind of realise um, that on a match day, we sit literally in uh, amongst the press so guys. So it's all really nice that we've all got that kind of really good uh, kind of um, communication with them. Uh, we have a bit of banter back and forth. And yeah. it is, the press pack's almost like a kind of family uh, where literally everyone's joking on and that. Yeah, I think that's really important. You said when I came into York, it was very much, um, there was a big divide between the, the press and the club um, you know, for various reasons. But... Um, you know, we've had meetings recently and they said it's, it's fantastic at the moment and you know, we get on so well which you know, helps the coverage as well I guess. In terms of the players as well, um, in terms of the social media stuff you do, um, how are they with the social media? Do, do they like being on camera? Do they sort of love, love that attention? Um, it varies. Um, so basically the way I've always tried to do is I've 
not try to kind of thrust the camera into uh, the faces or try and do anything that they don't want to do. We've tried to kind of keep it quite uh, natural in terms of we'll just kind of hold back, put a, um, a camera, and if they do something, they do something. If they don't, they don't. Some players just want to focus on the football, um, and that's fair enough. It's a case of... Um, but you do get the uh, personality start the show. So this season, um, we had Gianni uh, Alioski, uh, who's one of our um, more animated players, should we say. Um, and he just basically, when the players arrive, and he just started doing stuff in front of the camera. Uh, so we just thought, right, let's package this as something. So uh, we pa- started packaging it as a... Um, Gianni cam, which was a suggestion from a fan. So we just picked that up, ran with it. And then um, literally it's become kind of grew into this kind of whole different kind of almost feature in itself. So we've tried to do, uh, do it that way in terms of almost let the players kind of decide what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. Um, and I think it just comes across a bit more natural. Um, so I think there's times when you see stuff and it just looks forced. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. And it's kind of bringing the fans a bit closer um, as well by saying we're doing kind of an ask series at the moment um, in the lockdown in terms of just letting fans ask the questions rather than us kind of asking the same usual stuff. And I think the players get a kick out of that because you can do 10, 20 different interviews and you tend to get asked the same questions over and over again. Mm-hmm. Whereas if a fan's saying, ask them have they watched Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit more different, really. Yeah, and I think that's something you do really well. It seems like you know the fan base, you know, to a T and your content kind of echoes that. Do you think that's maybe your dad's influence in that, that you, you can sort of um, bounce ideas off him? Yeah, well, literally, like, when I first, um, when I was growing up, we just won the first division title. Um, so you had all that kind of influence. And then, obviously, um, you've got amazing players like Gary Speed and David Batty coming through and literally was in awe of them at the time. Um, and then, as I said earlier, one of the nice things was if a player wasn't playing for Leeds, there seemed to be a period of time where they moved to Newcastle. Uh, so yeah, people like Viduka, Woodgate, uh, Bowyer, uh, Speed and Batty as well coming. So it was kind of always growing up around Leeds United, um, all the players and that. So you have that to tap into. But the biggest, the biggest thing for me is just um, on a day-to-day basis, making sure that we're constantly reading the uh, hashtag LUFC on Twitter and all that, finding out what the fans are talking about, what um, kind of they want to see. And I'm very lucky in terms of um, we've got a very engaged fan base that literally they don't mind just kind of going, Craig, if you thought about doing this, Craig, if you thought about doing that. So a lot of the good ideas that uh, we have come from the fans themselves. And it's just about trying to kind of give them, it's everything we do is with the idea in mind of um, we're trying to be the fan's voice. So mm-hmm. there's some things you will, will never be able to do, um, but when it comes to shining a positive light on the club, the fan base, the community, um, we take a lot of inspiration from the fans themselves. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it because the feel invested within the social media, the website, um, and as, as a fan base in itself. Yeah, it's a good point. I think what I see quite often um, on on the Leeds tour, especially, you know, if you if you tweeted something quite funny or anything, you know, they get replies sort of, you know, that that gold gift but your face. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just think that's hilarious. It must be so sort of cool to have that like personal bond with the fans. Yeah, don't really know where those images started coming from. Just literally, I can't even remember when they started either. Just um, 
you just put something out just because we've got a very funny fan base as well. Yeah. Literally, I'll sit reading Twitter and I'll just be laughing my head off for hours on end at work. Um, just they have, the Leeds fans have an absolute knack of being able to even taking something which is sad or um, bad and just turning it around on its head and finding that kind of funny thing. So, um, yeah, just when we start putting funny stuff out, Literally, you get these graphics popping up, and that, and it's it's nice that the fans kind of feel like the club they're connected to the club a bit more. Because um, I think some clubs, it's very much a them and us kind of situation, uh, where it's like trying to be too professional, too polished, and all that. Whereas I just think if you come down to the same level then it's a case of um, you feel like the club's working for you and doing kind of providing content that you want to see. Um, so, yeah. Do you think it's more about personality on these feeds? You know, as you just touched on there, the, um, you know, some clubs literally just put um, article, statement, link here sort of thing. Mm. Um, Leeds don't seem to be one of the clubs who do that. Probably the leaders in what they're sort of doing that. Do you think it's important and would you agree that other clubs should be sort of doing that? Yeah, I think to a certain extent. Um, there's obviously some things where you go, right, we, we can't make a joke out of this or we've got to play it kind of safe. But for the vast majority of things, it's a case of, it's a lot about the tone of voice. So, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to find that perfect tone of voice. We try to kind of, the nice, nice um, stuff and the kind of family uh, kind of oriented stuff. But to be honest, it's all down to your audience. And we found that um, there was things that didn't work. There was things that did work. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was, there was stuff we'd done before the Niall Horan stuff, which uh, fans kind of started uh, getting into. But uh, the Niall Horan one was, really the one that kind of really took off and um, showed that you could be funny. And that's when we kind of started really going, right, that's worked, we'll start trying other things. And then you just find that, right, we're fan base quite like that savagery, kind of sarcastic, self-deprecating. Because um, when I first took over the social media, um, every transfer window, we always get hammered for um, don't go to bed just yet, which was a tweet that went out a few uh, seasons ago um, where basically we said, don't go to bed just yet. Um, kind of intimating that there was going to be a um, player coming in. Instead, two players went out. Um, so when I took over the social media, I was like, right, let's try and reclaim this. Um, so we had a player called Pontus Janssen who'd been on loan, who uh, turned into a permanent deal. And I uh, was like, right, please can I um, use this don't go to bed just yet. Um, so yeah, basically we did that. Everybody was like, oh my God, what have they done? What have they done? It's <laughs> literally flipped it on its head. Um, it's when they saw it and uh, saw the kind of end result of it, it's a case of, right, this is a kind of club that's willing to laugh at themselves, not at them too seriously. We're going to have a bit of fun. And then we were lucky that basically it coincided with the run of good results. Um, so, yeah, it's a case of, it's it's been a lot of luck. It's been a lot of uh, listening to the fans and all that. But um, in terms of other clubs doing it, you've got to be wary because we wouldn't do a lot of the stuff we do if we're on a bad, uh, like bad run. Yeah. Um, and also, it's, you look, at, you see other clubs when they try and do some of the stuff that we might be doing and it doesn't come off because the fans just on that type of kind of, yeah. into that type of humour where ours is just unique in terms of, as I say, they're just funny. Um, they love a good laugh. They don't take themselves seriously. You get that on the uh, in the stands as well, where 
uh, other clubs try and sing lead to form apart and then our fans start singing her back and um, it's just as I say it's it's just tapping into your audience more than anything if if uh, it works it works if it doesn't then you try a different tone of voice with these sort of tweets and stuff these um sort of responses tweets do you have to sort of check with the hierarchy before you put them out or, or is it just a spur of the moment thing you're just like right lads we're doing it uh, it varies so um some of the to be honest like i'm really lucky in that uh, my boss james mooney um after about a year yeah he basically was like right basically i trust what you do um it, after like some of the um, earlier stuff that we did. And then um, if I think that it's going to cause issues for the kind of communications of the club, the brand and all that, um, then I'll check with him. Um, but nine times out of ten, it's a case of I'll just go, right, um, I'll check with whoever sat next to us and go, do you think this is funny? And if they go, uh, if they start laughing, then I'll go, right, post that. Um, so I'm lucky in that I've got a um, press officer, Jordan Millens. Um, he's a good sounding board for stuff like that. And um, basically, I'll just go, George, what do you think of this? If he goes, yeah, I think that's funny. It's okay. So I'll go, all right, I've posted it. And that's pretty much, again, everybody goes on about the Noah Horan uh, tweets. And literally, I think we'd won, I forget who we were playing against, but we won the game. And then we did the press conference, got back to with seats, and then um, a fan just pointed us to it going, oh, have you seen this? And um, so I looked it up, I was like, all right, so he's taking a pot shot. And I was like, right, um, we'll try and think of a witty reply. Said, George, do you think this is funny? He's like, yeah, I think that's funny. Um, so just posted it. And that's pretty much how it works on a uh, basis so we've had other things like Dean Smith saying we grew the grass too long uh, when he was Brentford manager or um, Norwich paint in the um, dressing room pink little things like that where you just you as I say you work out whether it, if it's funny and it's not savage then I'll just post it if I think it's going to get us in trouble then I might run it by James and go Am I being, uh, like, am I pushing the boat too much here? Um, but I think because he's seen the reaction of the fans over time, um, he usually just goes, yeah, if you think it uh, does well with the fan base, then post it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so, well, I was doing a bit of research on this, actually, and I, well, I just typed in something like Leeds United social media, and um, there was actually a BBC article and all the, what they thought, <laughs> Salty tweets you've been putting to people and clubs, and just reading through it's it's hilarious. Like the you wouldn't expect it from a club, which I think is really good. But mm. in terms of the like the the Nile Horan thing, um, that went on for quite a while, didn't it? Like during the season. I mean, was there any sort of private messages, or is it just all sort of back and forth through Twitter? No, it's literally all purely what you see is what's happening. Uh, we don't do anything that's kind of staged or anything where it's pre-organised. A couple of other clubs have actually said, oh, um, when you do this stuff, we want to get involved and we get the engagement up and stuff. And it's, that takes away from the fun of it. So I'm always like, nah. Um, but literally, um, the only time I've heard anything about it was like, now Horan did a podcast with Patrice Evra where he said, oh, um, Leeds did this, quite funny. So then you go, all right, well, as long as he was happy with it, then that's fine. Because I think uh, we had an EFL meeting a couple of months ago uh, where I had to sit in a room with a few of the other, like Derby social media guy, Hull's social media guy and all that. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, but as we're all sat around the table, everyone's like, no, we don't take it personally. It's just fun. It's just trying to entertain your audience. Um, and that's all it is. So um, I never feel like we have to kind of talk about it with other people because I hope it never comes across as like bad or anything like that. Um, it purely just 
try not to be funny. Um, it's, there's no maliciousness in it whatsoever. The Nile Horan one kept going back and forth, um, but it was all in good natured. It was literally a case of um, just, I'm sure you had like a single to promote at the time. <laughs> we, just, we just wanted to make my fans laugh, so it all worked out for the best. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just a good laugh, and it's you know it's within the spirits of you know football anyway. It's just don't take yourself too seriously. I think, isn't it? It's um, it's all about that. I'm, I'm just a, sort of imagining a in your office, you've sort of got like a hit list of clubs or something where you, <laughs> you, you tick them off when you <laughs> when you got. I beer. actually did that. Um, I actually do have uh, halfway through the season. Um, basically, we have like a list of every who's kind of said something against us and uh, next time we play them it's like all right so you said this and so basically again it's just all part of your content planning so um, we try and kind of be as organized as possible you've got all your on this day stuff that goes out and then when a match is coming up you go all right so which former players have, um, are playing for the opposition, little things like that. Um, and then, yeah, you do kind of work in, like, have they ever said anything against us? Um, is this something that we can kind of spice up the game a bit? And again, it's all just part of the kind of journey on a match day. Of um, And it's nice that basically you've got fans who are kind of now expecting us to... Um, if they've seen that a club's kind of had a go at Leeds then basically uh, just be itching for full time when hopefully we'll won. And then it's like, uh, get them, get them, get them, get them. And, um, so yeah, it's a case of, it's nice to, again to have that two-way conversation with the fans and um, make them feel like they're part of it. Um, but yeah, in terms of what we're fa- finding is, um, and it's not just other clubs as well, it's media comp- um, like media outlets and companies and all that have found that because Leeds have got such an um, engaged like, uh, fan base, um, literally they'll put out articles just to rile Leeds fans up and they'll say things just to kind of get them to bite and all that. So it's like there's a misconception that we go, when we're doing kind of funny stuff on uh, social media, we'll, we're kind of starting the fight where it's like, not really. We're kind of trying to be clever by saying, well, you've said this, so we have a right to kind of reply. Um, I think the only club that have kind of initiated something was Blackburn um, when this basically said about filling their stadium for them. Uh, but again, that's kind of playing into the lead stereotype. Um, but yeah, the, the vast majority of it is because somebody else has said something. So yeah, we do kind of call that a hit list. Yeah, so what does, um, so just talk me through like a general match day for you. What's your sort of role on a match day? Are you the sort of live Twitter feed? Yeah, so anything that goes on social, uh, social media is pretty much me um, so whether that's not match day or match day um, so pretty much a, the day I'll start with um, scheduling all the kind of um, stuff that can be kind of scheduled in so uh, your initial match day preview uh, doing all the graphics for that um, kind of look back at previous teams um, we'll schedule all that into social media then it's getting to the stadium for about 11 o'clock, uh, doing a quick pan of, like we'll do a video show on Ellen Road, uh, just because what we try and do with match day content is kind of think of the people that can't be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to think that the majority of the 35,000 fans are, um, probably in the pub, um, having a drink before a match, and then they're in the stand. So we're not really targeting those people. It's more the people who are in other countries or um, further afield who can't get to the game. So we'll take videos of every single ground that we visit uh, just so they can see it. Um, And then basically we'll do the team arrival, so I'll film them. It's all done on iPhone as well, so literally we can quickly cut it up and put it straight out. 
Um, so yeah, do team arrival, then do the graphic for the team sheet, um, team lineup that goes out. Um, then it's basically running back down to pitch side, doing a little few videos for um, players training or coming out. And then, um, yes, do the, we used to do a minute by minute um, stuff, but we moved that over to the website. And now we, We've kind of minimised it to key moments, um, which are more visual um, and all that. And then after a game, um, I'll basically run down, record the uh, press conference on an iPhone, run back to the uh, stand, chop that up, and then push it out as live. And then after it, it's just basically all, hopefully with one, and then it's just kind of trying to put it... Um, because obviously you can't put out highlights until 12 o'clock the next day. So it's just trying to find ways to use the imagery and stuff that we've got from the photographers to um, kind of create a story and carry that narrative through to when the camp put the highlights are. Yeah, so do you have sort of various people helping and such? I mean, do you do all the graphics yourself? Or do you have a graphic designer? or? Uh, so we've got graphic designers who work in the marketing department, but they do like the kind of non-football stuff. Um, so because um, when I first started the club, we didn't have a graphic designer and um, I taught myself how to use Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign. Um, I've kind of had a, always done graphic design since I've been at the club. Um, so I'll do the kind of football stuff. So um the vast majority of stuff, um, unless it's got a marked and slant on it, um, I'll create all the graphics for that. Um, we've got a um, guy who started helping us this uh, year called Oliver, and he'll, he works primarily with um, Jordan, our press officer, doing web articles and stuff for the website, but on a match day, he'll help us uh, with the odd video and things like that. Um, but it's Compared to other clubs, um, I don't think people realise just how small of a uh, uh, staff there is at clubs at times. Um, so you look at like your Premier League teams and they might have like five, six, seven, eight people doing your job. Whereas um, when you go further down the ladder, I'm sure you'll know at York where you're doing loads of different things and stuff. Um, we're still pretty much like that where um, we've got myself doing social media, uh, we've got Jordan who does press, uh, Dominique who does PR, um, and then obviously we've got James who's the head of comms and um, who oversees that and uh, the marketing side of things as well. Um, so everyone's kind of got their own little things we do. We do kind of like um, interact with each other and stuff, we all sit in the same office um, and bounce off each other, but everyone's kind of got their own thing to do. And considering, you know, you're the only sort of person who does most of the social media, um, you know, Leeds is a massive, massive club. Is there a sort of element of pressure, you know, when, you, when you're tweeting or, you know, you might think, you know, sometimes I do a typo and I delete it straight away and then <laughs> redo it sort of thing. Is there a sort of pressure in that? Yeah, with the typo stuff, um, literally, like, Twitter seriously needs to have, like, an edit function. Like, I want this down on record, it needs an edit function because the amount of mistakes I make is unbelievable. But um, yeah, literally, to be honest, it's weird, but um, I'm not the most organized of people. Uh, so I, I tend to leave things to the last minute, but then in a weird way, I get a kick out of the kind of adrenaline and um, kind of pressure and stuff. Whereas I think if you don't have that pressure, you kind of fall into a kind of uh, lull almost where you'll go, um, kind of become a bit complacent. So it's nice in that um, literally anybody who does social media at every club is, literally knows it's a 24-7 job. Um, you'll try and find time when you can to kind of have a couple of hours off or something. But as you find just something's happening constantly. Uh, so literally it is a seven day job um but you enjoy it it's a case of you know exactly what you've got yourself into and um it's only when at the end of the year you look at kind of your engagement numbers and video views and all that and you go 
all right, that's a bit scary that literally we've reached 750 million people. <laughs> and, but then it's cool at the same time because then you think, all right, literally there's very few other jobs where you would reach that many people. Um, so it's, it's like, it's good and bad, um, the pressure. Um, but for the most part, it's literally like, I've learned how to slow myself down a bit and kind of check things two or three times. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've minimized the kind of mistakes, hopefully. So is that sort of the social media, is that sort of grown year upon year now? You know, I think you've sort of developed a style, you've changed it, and now you've got a, a style where you're engaging with the fans. Is, have you seen the sort of social media sort of skyrocket, particularly, you know, this year, maybe end of last year? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm happy that literally every year, um, but figures have always constantly gone up. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, literally when I first started, um, I don't think it's wrong to say that we were quite far behind the curve in terms of the digital output. Like um, the website wasn't great. Um, and then the social media, um, we didn't really use Instagram. We were two years behind everybody in terms of Twitter. It was only really Facebook that we used. Um, so on one hand, it was quite easy to grow the numbers because we just had to push more content out. Uh, so that's what we focused on the first year of just literally anything we could cover, we just put it out and grew the numbers that way. And then second, third year, we've just basically tried to take a clever route going right that works, that doesn't work, we'll get rid of that, we'll uh, focus more on that. Um, and again, it's, I think a lot of clubs fall into the kind of um, issue of just putting stuff out for the sake of putting it out, whereas we've kind of went, if it doesn't work, then there's no point in putting it out because you're just not getting the engagement and you're just filling people's timelines. Uh, so that's one of the reasons when I mentioned before about the minute by minute stuff. Um, like a lot of clubs still do that. If it works for them, great. But we found that it was literally just flooding um, people's timelines and they just weren't interacting with the stuff that we wanted them to interact with. Um, so literally we got rid of that and then we've seen the numbers increase because of it because um, it's easier to find the goal tweets. It's easier to find um, like the key moments, as I say. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of building on um, kind of a solid foundation and now, because we've kind of got rid of all the stuff that doesn't work, it's allowing us to uh, work on stuff that does work and kind of be a bit more creative with the time. Uh, and it's just constant process, like um, people say, oh, we're doing a great job with what we're doing at Leeds, but at the same time, um, we're not finished yet, it's literally uh, we've got so much more that we can do. There's things that we don't do, which we should do. Um, so it's, I think it's an exciting thing of literally you're constantly learning, you're constantly producing new things um, and not kind of resting on your laurels. And yeah, literally, as I say, in terms of like, um, I don't know what the impressions were like a couple of years ago, but we're now up to 758 million impressions um, you know, 72 million video views and all that um, and it's just a case of right now the next target is to reach a billion people um, and then kind of keep growing and growing and growing and setting new targets um, and it's nice because in terms of engagement and stuff we're now at the point where uh, we're in amongst the top six in the Premier League uh, without being in the Premier League so um, it just shows kind of the power of the Leeds United kind of fan base and the brand and all that. Yeah, and with social media kind of adapting all the time, I guess, you know, you can do so much more as well. You know, personally, I'm looking forward to seeing what you produce over the next um, few years, I think. Um, I think the, the sort of next topic we want to get on, I think though, um, I'm hoping there'll be a few students watching this podcast, you know, wanting to get into football media, football clubs, um, you know, in the full-time roles, what would you, what what would be your best advice for a student graduating coming into this, wanting to get a role at a club like Leeds? 
Um, for me, it's always been curiosity. It's the big one. Uh, you've just got to be curious about absolutely everything. I don't think it matters so much. As I said, I came from a marketing background. Other people have come from uh, like the press ba- uh, degrees and all that. Um, I don't think it so much matters. I think what matters is, um, one, just being curious of everything, ask questions of everything, um, and see content and everything as well. So, um, so literally, even if you don't think it's interesting now, it might be interesting in the future, just get into the habit of taking photos of everything, taking videos of everything. And um, one thing I used to, uh, when I was working in Newcastle University and they were great at doing was kind of uh, sending me out on kind of college courses and all that. Uh, so Photoshop, Illustrator and Design, and then Premiere Pro and all that. Um, just keep trying to teach yourself new things um, and always try and, if you've got a spare half an hour, hour, just sit there and download a new app that might help you kind of chop up videos or um, try and learn Photoshop. Because I think where in the past, um, when I first started, I was always kind of um, apprehensive about coming from a marketing background um, compared to other people who'd come from the press background. Because, um, but I think as the last few years has gone in particular, it's become a very creative role. Uh, so you literally need to be able to create a graphic or create a video within uh, half an hour, an hour. And sometimes um, if you're relying on external people to create these for you, then you might miss something. Um, especially, as I say, there's, there's things which are literally happen at the drop of a hat and you need to react to. Um, you need to be able to create content. So yeah, literally it's curiosity and um, trying to learn as much as you can. Yeah, brilliant. I think the, just get on to the last question now, which I'm, you know, um, I'm gonna ask everyone who comes on this podcast. It's what is your dream job? Um, it's gonna sound cheesy as hell, but I'm doing it now. Um, it's like we have a running joke in the office where literally um, James will send us like other clubs that are doing um, like job adverts and stuff and he's like don't go there and it's like I'll joke back and I'm going alright and he saw on the LinkedIn uh, CV and all that um, but yeah literally I'm doing it now um, I'm at a club that I absolutely love um, it's a case of Leeds United the founders, the uh, staff, the stadium. I fell in love with it all. Um, so I'm at the club that I want to be at. And in terms of job role, I'm doing it. Like, um, I love being there, doing the social media. Um, it's perfect for me because it's a case of it's, I get bored if I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so um, being in a role that it's, always different you're always creating different content um putting new spins on things it's yeah i mean I'm doing the perfect job for me i kind of thought that would be your answer anyway <laughs> <laughs> just want to give a quick thanks to craig for taking time out to speak to me on my podcast i've really enjoyed the chat and hopefully it was an entertaining listen especially to any leeds fans who might have made it to the end just to say you can subscribe and follow via apple Podcasts and spotify and also keep up to date over on twitter which is at press pod